Hi everyone and welcome to video 3.2 of UOIT AEDT 4110, Assessment for Adult Learning. This is Janet Simmons and in this video we will examine the importance of aligning planning, teaching, and assessment. We will begin with the analysis questions and then we'll examine learning outcomes. The next topic is backwards design. And finally, we'll briefly discuss learning goals before wrapping up with the synthesis questions. There are two analysis questions for this video. Assessment isn't just a series of events. Assessment occurs within the planning and instruction process. But where does assessment fit and how do we plan for it? Assessment should never be considered as an afterthought. In fact, it should be considered alongside the planning and instructional experiences. This question should be lingering in the backdrop of planning and instruction. It may seem strange at first, but we actually start at the end. Similar to when designing instruction, we look to the learning outcomes when designing assessment. Learning outcomes appear near the beginning of a course syllabus. These are the learning outcomes for this course, and they appear on the second page of the syllabus. All instruction provided in a course aligns with at least one learning outcome. Similarly, all assessments must align with the learning outcomes. Learning outcomes articulate the knowledge and skills learners will acquire upon successful completion of the course. So that is why we start at the end. We call this backwards design. We will investigate this in greater detail in future classes. This is just meant to give you a big picture perspective of where learning outcomes fit within the planning and instructional process. We start at the end with identifying the desired results or what it is students will learn or be able to do by the end of the course. We don't actually start with planning the learning experiences. Rather, we consider the assessment. How will we know that students have learned? This is determining acceptable evidence. Lastly, we plan instructional experiences that guide students to the end goal or learning outcomes. And although it may appear as a linear or step-by-step -step process, it's a very dynamic process. Whilst we start with the learning outcomes, it can be very blurry and messy and change because a change in one of the components we see on the screen influences one or both of the other components. For example, a facilitator may discover through formative or summative assessment that learners do not understand a concept discussed in a tutorial. Understanding and applying the concept is critical because it aligns with a learning outcome. The facilitator must then revisit future instructional activities so that learners have the knowledge to work towards successfully completing the learning outcome. Although we will not create learning outcomes in this course, it's important to know the elements learning outcomes must have. First, learning outcomes must be student-centered. We see this with starting with what learners must be able to do at the end of a course. In this instance, it describes. Next, there must be specific tasks learners must be able to perform. These are verbs, and we can turn to Bloom's taxonomy to find the appropriate verbs. These verbs make the outcomes clear and concrete. Finally, the learning outcomes must be measurable. Ask yourself, how will students demonstrate their understanding? What will they and the facilitators see or hear as evidence of their learning? The tangible learning outcomes inform the instructional activities, which informs the assessment, which also informs the learning outcomes. There is a tension between the three that must be maintained with each supporting the others. Therefore, when we create assessments, we must ensure we provide the appropriate instructional activities and the assessments aligned with the learning outcomes. Going even further back in the design process, we encounter learning goals. We find these in the course description. The course goal could also be called the purpose statement. The course goal is broad and is generalized statement about what is to be learned. Think of the course goal as a target that needs to be reached or hit. The course description is created by the university, which facilitators and designers cannot change. There are two synthesis questions for this video, both of which ask you to reflect on your previous experiences with learning outcomes and assessment. The planning process has many pitfalls when we revise or create a new course. 
It's vitally important to remember that the learning goals are the foundation on which the learning outcomes rest. All instruction and assessment must align with the learning outcomes. Otherwise, the tension between the three will collapse and the course will not be successful for the learners. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.